हाँ जी बिल्कुल हो गया ना लाइफ ओके स्टूडेंट्स सो वेलकम टू द थर्ड लेक्चर टुडे आई मीन यस्टरडे आई डिड शेयर द पी डी एफ दैट इज टू बी डिस्कस टूडे ऑन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप एंड द टॉपिक वॉज ऑलरेडी and then before we start the class let me explain the mandate of this initiative first of all the aim is to benefit all those students who lack very much understanding of about the international relations how things function and how things it is not just limited to a specific segment why nations engage with each other or india is visiting some other nation but about the broader perspective so that you would be able to write better answers because with better with a broader perspective it becomes easy for you to seg segment your answers and get more number of pointers it is neither a foundation class nor a just current affairs class but a mix of both in current in current affairs segment we shall be briefly discussing important events and uh, then some of the specific events and their detailed discussion so in so that that would be helping you in your mains examination improving your understanding and yes this time again we have brought in certain changes and that changes last time while discussing the answers to the questions i was writing on the board and it was taking a lot of time so rather than writing i have given in the form of notes so that it would be with you in the form of content and time taken would be less and we can directly switch on to the discussion and more number of topics can be covered okay but before i start let me say it yet again that i did not get many of the suggestions on telegram this week unless you suggest you will be getting the topics that i think that are important unless you tell me i won't be able to know what are the topics that you want me to discuss either briefly or in detail so again i would request you that please suggest the topics so that i come in a position to know what you want me to discuss and the discussion can be accordingly because ultimately the purpose is not to benefit me but to benefit you to help you out okay and uh, let me say it again the name of that telegram group is ir this week all smalls this is the telegram group i upload the ppt or pdf on this group and here only you can suggest me the topics and apart from here under the videos since last in the last class the questions were not given i had given the questions on telegram group as well as under the video of the last lecture so those two questions i will be discussing and then we will move up, move forward to the rest of the lecture okay so these were the two questions and these questions i had given them under the comment section of last week video as well as on the telegram group so please do not complain that you were unable to get this question i had promised and i kept my promise so it was on your part to honestly attempt this and then verify it yourself from the content that i shall be providing okay so the question number 1 afghanistan presents opportunity for cooperation between india and china then 
discuss the challenges involved and suggest a way forward so this question has got three parts first is it presents opportunity for cooperation okay and the next part is challenges involved and way forward so whenever in a question there is a bland statement just like this because after this question no word like discuss analyze critically analyze or explain is given even if that word is not given you have to understand that implicitly that word is present so what you have to do is that you have to justify the first statement with your comments okay and then the rest of the topic i mean rest of the part of the question okay so i have given some of the solution pointers and you can get this verified from your own side the first thing is about the introduction introduction can be something like this and keep introduction very simple if we go for thinking of a very complex introduction unnecessary that will result in wastage of time so we have to save time keep introduction first brief second simple and third is in context of questions demand keeping simple does not mean you will start explaining that india and afghanistan have historical relations or india and afghanistan are in south asia or something like that question is about india china cooperation in afghanistan so your introduction should be in reference to india and china so your introduction can be something like this india and china sharing a common geographical space possess threats from afghanistan since change in regime after 15th of august 2021 a very simple introduction okay and after that introduction krishna hi and yes do keep asking questions in last two classes you people were not asking questions and it cannot be that some teacher can be so effective that he explains everything and there are no doubts in students minds the purpose of this live initiative is so that you ask questions okay so we have seen the introduction then your subheading will be very brief not just opportunities make it opportunities for cooperation okay write it underline it or if possible put it in a box this should be clearly visible you do not need to give a very long afghanistan presents opportunities for cooperation between india and china as follows 1 2 3 no need opportunities for cooperation just a very brief subheading and under that you will be discussing all these pointers what will be stabilizing afghanistan why because instability in afghanistan is a threat to both india and china or it is a common threat to both india and china because of terrorism or in a matlab uh, refugees third can be narcotics you have to give it a simple seven to nine words line okay second would be tackling terrorism emanating from afghanistan here you can give reference of kashmir jammu and kashmir in india and shinkeyang in china are vulnerable to threats emanating from afghanistan okay second point third would be india and china can go for investing in afghanistan economy so as to create jobs and stabilize it Afghanistan presents opportunity for strengthening SCO by taking effective steps for curbing terrorism you can give reference to RATS regional anti terrorist structure this is part of SCO and then reenergizing bilateral relations India and China bilateral relations are going through a bad phase so cooperation on afghanistan can 
help in confidence building and re-energize the bilateral relations. These are very simple lines. You have to simply diversify your points and you can, you are good to go. Then the second part of the question was challenges. So what are the, then you can just give us this brief subheading. What are the challenges? The first would be mutual distrust between India and China. Then expanding CPEC. China has an aim of expanding CPEC up to Afghanistan. However, India is against it. Why? Because it violates India's sovereignty and territorial integrity. So it's but natural that India is not going to cooperate with China on issue of CPEC. So in case of investing in economy and infrastructure development, this can be a bummer. Then Pakistan's strategy of strategic depth. Avoid such repetition of words. Strategy, strategic depth. Rather than strategy, change this word to policy. Pakistan's policy of strategic depth. We will be discussing this while discussing India-Afghanistan relations in detail. But uh, this is a point. Write it down and after while discussing, we will go, get into detail of it. Okay. Then inner factionalism within Taliban. Since there are multiple factions within Taliban, so negotiating with all groups for stabilizing Afghanistan can be a challenging prospect for both India and China. And third is rise of ISIS, ISISK. This is Khorasan province, the ISIS in Afghanistan. So this can lead to increase in terror attacks, dampening scope for cooperation. You can also give example of that China did not participate in DRSD, Delhi Regional Security Dialogue and nor did it invite India to the dialogue in Beijing. So this explains that China is not interested in increasing India's stake in the, in stabilizing Afghanistan. Okay. Third would be, since the question asks, suggest a way forward, what can be that way forward? In way forward, always bring in some institution, because through institution, cooperations be cooperation becomes very easy. So, since we know that in SARC, India is there, Pakistan is there, but China is not there. But SCO is one such organization, and SCO's mandate is also related to tackling terrorism. So, using SCO as a platform, why? Because both India, China, then it is Pakistan, Russia and all other regional nations. We will be discussing SCO today. Okay. As a platform. Then, second would be cooperating with other regional pairs. Third, Recognizing shared stakes and fates. And Chautha would be, fourth would be, first go for cooperation in some of the uh, non-disputed areas like humanitarian cooperation and thus whatever the spillover of this cooperation would be that can help in Increasing cooperation in other dimensions as well. Okay. So, and after this, you will have to conclude that India and China need to cooperate on Afghanistan not only for their own security, but for the security and stability of the region as well. Okay. So, this was. Question number one. Now let us look at the question number two. Change of regime in Afghanistan presents multiple challenges for India. Okay. Discuss. What are the steps that India has taken to mitigate those challenges? Here, if you are interested, just for self-practice, you can bring in another word. 
opportunity. It presents the opportunities and challenges for India and what are the steps India has taken. Okay. Uh, and yes, I will come to that. Point is, we will first discuss multiple challenges and then what are the steps India has taken. Okay. So, I just want to move very fast from this so that we can go to rest of the topic. Okay. So, that is why I am in a bit hurry. Okay. So, with regards to the previous question, under opportunities, here you can go for using all those diagrams like you can write opportunities circle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or opportunities then 1, 2, 3, 4 because many a times you are suggested to be a bit creative. Do not make your answer sit very monotonous. So, in the first statement since we have to justify it just you can go for this diagrammatic representation. Okay, diagram, flowchart, whatever it is. The question is, what are the threats from Afghanistan? And yes, make it a part of your content as well. Naturally, the first threat would be terrorism. Second would be narcotics trade. Another would be humanitarian crisis because of refugee influx. Fourth can be Pakistan getting strategic depth and ungoverned spaces that can fall into the hands of terrorists. Fifth challenge will be continuing its connectivity initiatives because we have aim of linking through Chabahar up to Afghanistan and further to Central Asia. Then connectivity, another would be threat to India's investments which is roughly around 3 billion dollars. Okay, so those are all the points that I have written here. Terror threat, Pakistan's misadventurism. Here you can write Pakistan getting strategic depth. I am use, repeating this term and again and again because in case of Pakistan and Afghanistan, this is the aim of Pakistan to gain strategic depth in Afghanistan. And yet again, the purpose is also related to security. Imagine an Afghanistan which is in favor of India. So, what would be the situation? This is Pakistan. This is India. And this is Afghanistan, right? So, here if Pakistan starts misadventurism, India can heat up Afghan border with the help of Afghan government. So, this would be a two front threat for Pakistan naturally something any none of the nations would want. That is one thing. Second is through Afghanistan, Pakistan can continue to train terrorists over there with, without any accountability and continue its proxy war with India. Then through Afghanistan reaching out to Central Asian nations or even creating problems for Iran. So, these are challenges why Pakistan wants a strategic depth. Strategic depth means a situation where in Pakistan is in such a, such a control of Afghanistan that it can direct its policies, its actions as per Pakistan's interest. And that is why if you remember Pakistan's DGISI had visited Afghanistan. Haqqanis are in control in, within Taliban. So that Pakistan can have its say in Afghan affairs. That is the purpose of strategic depth. Okay. Next, as I suggested, humanitarian crisis. Why? It can be because of hunger and also because of refugee crisis. 
then narcotics trade you can give data regarding uh, at mudra port a uh, huge consignment of drugs and afghanistan is part of golden crescent so these are some of the keywords that you can include it there threat to indian investment 3 billion dollar worth of investment and rest of it we will be reading just in a while and challenges to connectivity projects because india wants to reach up to central asia and up to europe and afghanistan is an important piece in that puzzle then small subheading steps taken what are the steps that we have taken unlike 1995 to 2001 this time we have remained engaged even after closing embassies we have provided humanitarian aid in the form of wheat consignment medical supplies and vaccines what what was has been our third strategy we have differentiated between taliban and afghan people because presently we do not recognize taliban but if such a situation continues that we do not recognize taliban so we are not going to engage with afghanistan in such a situation whatever connectivity or developmental projects that we have undertaken over there it will all be a complete waste and second would be the immense soft power that india enjoys in afghanistan that soft power will be squandered away so it's important that somehow india needs to put its toe hold in that afghan door so that if and when situation arises door can be completely opened and india can get inside okay so that is why we have gone for this strategy we have differentiated between taliban and afghan population and we are saying that we are here to help afghan people not taliban and then we have taken initiatives like delhi regional security dialogue with all afghanistan neighbors and this is a very recent news that we have restarted our embassy in india this was not in the news but afghanistan spokesperson of for afghanistan ministry of external affairs that was in news last to last week they have said that india has gone india has expanded and a contingent of itbp has all also been deployed and afghanistan has provided security assurance diplomatic immunity and all those protections to indian contingent and what is this engagement and why is this engagement we shall all be discussing in just a while so after this steps taken conclusion would be that india steps are in right direction it needs to remain engaged in afghanistan bilaterally as well as through various institutions and regional nations so as to stabilize afghanistan and bring it towards the path of development and prosperity a very simple conclusion and that would be your question number 1 question number 2 any doubts if any one of you has got any doubt regarding these two questions you can ask it here on the live chat okay so let us go to look at some of the new important events this week i hope there aren't any doubts because none of you are asking it so the first news is union shipping ministry he visited iran and this was a 
एग्रीमेंट साइंड रिकोगशन ऑफ सर्टिफिकेट फॉर कॉम्पिटेंसी ऑफ सी फेयर फॉर अ लॉन्गर टाइम नेचुरली सिंस वी आर ओपनिंग चा बहार ओवर देयर एंड इंडियन सी फेयर दे वुड बी गोइंग एंड डॉकिंग एट चा बहार सो दिस वॉज अ पार्ट ऑफ द एग्रीमेंट बट दिस इवेंट नीड्स टू बी सीन इन ब्रॉडर कंटेक्सट वी नो दैट न्यूक्लियर डील इज गोइंग ऑन and it may so happen that nuclear deal is signed and afghanistan is out of sanctions so in such a scenario india needs to remain engaged in iran sanction iran comes out of sanction so india needs to remain engaged in iran so that when opportunity comes and iran comes out of sanctions we can go for investment and other cooperation because afghan iran is important for us because of regional geopolitics because it lies along persian gulf and is critical to our connectivity with our links with central asia and eastern europe then another is opportunity for investment chabahar region and chabahar free zone we also know that in farzad b gas field we were invested but now iran has said that they are going to develop that on their own third would be with respect to connectivity projects and fourth would be yeah india's energy security so geopolitics energy security connectivity projects investment okay so that is why we need to remain engaged and moreover we have to tackle china over there because they have india iran and china they have gone for cooperation roughly 25 sorry 400 billion dollar 25 year but there is a lack of clarity on what is that cooperation is all about okay so this news needs to be seen in that context okay so if a question comes about india's engagements or india's initiatives in iran so you can give example that india has remained engaged even during the sanctions period okay second would be defense minister visited tashkent for a co meet and because of this news we will be discussing in detail about importance of co and challenges of co all these membership and all so that's it iran nuclear talk revival you see in last class also we had seen about this us congress voting and challenges in front of biden it may so happen that uh, the democrats they might lose the midterm elections and the deal might not be ratified by, by the us congress but since every day some or the other development is taking place and you are reading about it in the newspaper so it's better that we discuss it after the completion of this negotiation okay because negotiations negotiations are now in very critical phase and it may so happen that both sides agree to it so i won't be commenting on this every week but after there are some very concrete developments in this deal then we will be discussing it in detail okay next is jay shankar visited latin america and this is for the first time that any of the foreign ministers has visited nations like prague okay so the visit was to peruguay then it was brazil and then it was argentina and in peruguay we have also opened an embassy okay so in this reference only the topic today will be that will be discussed is india latin america relations okay because in general we tend to ignore this topic india latin america relations because generally there is not too much of development too much of movement 
but since the eam external affairs minister he has visited Ar these three nations in latin america latin america becomes a very important topic even with respect to this year means so that is why we will be discussing india latin america relations next is sri lanka to change controversial prevention of terrorism act with some new security law prevention of terrorism act this was applied on some of the student protesters and these laws are very stringent and there was criticism from us european union and all so sri lanka has decided to amend this law and this law prevention of terrorism act pta we also had pota that got repealed so they had a similar prevention of terrorism act and some of the students that they were protesting they were booked under it there was criticism and as a result sri lanka has said that they are going to bring in new security law and the purpose of bringing this very small topic was for some of the psir students okay because in psir and also gs students can also use this bit of information but this is mainly with respect to psir there is something called as security dilemma and then there is something called as insecurity dilemma so you see the security dilemma is that whenever any nation goes for expanding its military expanding its power for its own security the neighboring nations they feel threatened and this creates a dilemma in their mind and then they would also go for expanding their own economy and ultimately this leads to or this might lead to an arms race for example china is there and we have a threat from china as a result we are increasing our military capabilities or even if had china not been there we are in indian ocean region and this is a vast area so naturally for safety security of this region and we are also a net security provider we would go for securing this area and we will expand our naval capability but looking at this pakistan will start getting fearful that india is disturbing the balance in the region and india is trying to act against us that is india's intentions that is something called as security dilemma for example if we look at post world war even pre world war situation this uh, britain had expanded its naval capacity in re in reply germany also ex started expanding its naval capability and that was one of the key areas of conflict between germany and uk there were other factors i am not denying but that is an example of security dilemma but this term in security dilemma this is with regards to third world nations third world nations they say that it is not just that we face security dilemma but third world nations also face in security dilemma the challenge the threat does not come only from outside but from within the nation because of various secessionist groups or terror groups so in order to handle this insecurity dilemma because most of the third world nations they are hardly 60 70 80 years old nationalism is not that much strong there is diversity so naturally there will be protest there will be fear of secessionism so as a result third world nations they go for bringing in some very stringent laws to tackle such secessionist tendencies such terrorist elements but when such strong laws are brought for tackling terrorism or secessionism the western nations they look at it as violation of 
ह्यूमन राइट एंड वायलेशन ऑफ बेसिक वैल्यूज सो दिस क्रिएट्स अ कंफ्लिक्ट बिटवीन परसेप्शन ऑफ सिक्योरिटी बिटवीन डेवलप्ड नेशन एंड डेवलपिंग नेशन इवन इन केस ऑफ इंडिया प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन और आफ्सपा दीज आर कंटिन्यूसली क्रिटिसाइज बट द टाइप ऑफ चैलेंजेस दैट वी फेस इन आर नॉर्थ ईस्ट और इन सम ऑफ द हिंटरलैंड लाइक इन छत्तीसगढ़ झारखंड और तेलंगाना एंड ऑल such threats are not faced by western nation so simply they would not understand it so for psir students this is how you can understand all these topics from psir perspective because one of the students was asking me that will this be sufficient because in paper 2 that student was facing some challenge so this is how you read it you bring in an issue as a generalist perspective you will say okay sri lanka change this law what were the challenges goes against basic human rights against the state etc etc and after changing positives in line with basic human values creates a soft power for the state shows state as a welfare state and all but when you go for psir these are the terms that you would be using security dilemma insecurity dilemma notion of human security notions of sovereignty okay so that is why i had brought in this sri lanka related issue okay then this one is quite interesting oh yes india voted against russia at unsc during a procedural vote on ukraine just 3 days back you must have read about this in the news that ruchira kambos india is permanent representative to the un there was a voting at the unsc and since we are presently a non permanent member of the nsc unsc till the end of this year so the voting was termed in media as for the first time india has voted against russia the external affairs ministry said that the voting was not against russia and now let me explain what was the key issue the issue at, the issue at hand was that there was an unsc meet that was supposed to take place and generally the rule in the unsc has been that whoever member has to address it that member has to be physically present during covid the rule was changed and virtual participation was also permitted and now since the threat of covid has gone down the older rules have been applied okay so russia brought in this specific question because russia had said that we are not against zelensky's participation and zelensky addressing unsc it's about the procedure and rules of the unsc that whoever member wants to address he has to be physically present so the russia brought in a voting that should zelensky be permitted to address virtually because russia was in agreement with zelensky addressing but the question was whether it would be virtual or he has to be in person russia said that if ukrainian ambassador to un he can come he can address we have got absolutely no issue but russia was russia's point of contention was with respect to the procedural aspect that should virtual addressing be permitted so on this issue there was a voting and in that voting russia naturally voted against then it was china abstained and the rest 13 members including india voted in favor so first of all the issue was not related to ukraine point number 1 i mean ukraine conflict with russia but it was merely a procedural aspect so this does not go against russia and second is that we are not a colony of russia 
इंडिया कैन ऑलवेज टेक इट्स डिसीजन इंडिपेंडेंटली एंड दिस इज वन ऑफ द रिफ्लेक्शन सो अगेन सपोज देर आर डिस्कशन इन देस्टर्न मीडिया then they would say there can be an argument that you see on the issue of addressing of zelensky india did not vote alongside russia neither did india abstain but india voted in the favor of the west so they can construe it as changing stance of india with respect to ukraine but it is not about changing the stance india is taking an independent position and moreover during this discussion india again addressed the issue as ukraine crisis india did not even term it as a conflict or invasion india addressed in the un as a crisis so india's position has remained same and india as usual has always talked about going for diplomacy and discussion and immediate cessation of violence that has been india's perennial position so i hope now you get it about this issue okay so let us look at the last one in only hand in hand exercise between india and usa that is going to take place only in uttarakhand and that region is roughly 50 kilometers away from india china border previously we did not used to but now since india is giving indications so you see visibility of the lai lama visits to arunachal the lai lama visiting ladakh and broad publicity pm wishing him and now this exercise near uttarakhand border so these are those subtle indications to china that we also have enough pins to prick you so when this exercise is taking place china has raised objections that as per the agreements signed between india and china it should not be target any cooperation between two nations that should not be targeted against third nation but the fun fact is china supporting pakistan is against india then the same three agreements that sorry four agreements that china gave reference to during galwan crisis in 2020 china itself violated those all agreements so this has been a perennial chinese design to hunt with to run with the hare and hunt with the hound so this is how china goes around that for itself rules are different and for others they would always take shelter of all these agreements even resolutions humanitarian laws and all okay so these were some of the key important news there are some other news but that we will be discussing in next there have been some de developments in recent times but that we will be discussing in next lecture so now let us look at the topics taliban india engagement china's demand for military outpost in pakistan in the topic it was written afghanistan but it's mainly in pakistan and afghanistan okay because there is a bagram air base and there have been talks that china is very much interested in occupying that air base that air base had been abandoned by the usa after it vacated afghanistan importance of sco for india why because the defense minister visited sco and he addressed the meet and india latin america relations because of external affairs ministers visit to latin america so let us look at the very first topic regarding india taliban engagements we all know that during 1995 to 2001 we were supporting the northern alliance then after us came we got engaged in afghanistan but that engagement was limited to economic domain 
and india's policy or india's engagements with afghanistan has always been criticized the argument made is that india is not applying its own policy but india is applying pakistan's policy in afghanistan because what would happen is that pakistan would advise usa usa would advise india and india would say okay 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 so a scenario where you have gone for investing 2 billion dollar initially and then additional 1 billion dollar that was 3 billion dollars but when there was a crisis situation ultimately you have to leave or four of your embassies and come back so this was a this is a very significant challenge because in diplomacy we always hedge our options so that even in a crisis situation how we should maneuver but you went for investment you invested for all these two 20 years and then suddenly you are out of there so that does not seem like a very prudent and a very matured stance so as a result and we know that taliban is is now a force to reckon with and taliban is a reality so as a result now we have gone for engaging taliban why because first of all our own stakes in the region are increasing be it militarily be it economically be it diplomatically our profile has increased at the same time pakistan's profile it has gone down and even Taliban knows that it is India only who can help them out. Pakistan does not have capability and Chinese help comes with a lot of strings attached. So there is an agreement within Taliban as well. And that is why they have said that India should move from humanitarian to developmental assistance. India should complete its projects. They have said that we are giving security guarantees, economic, diplomatic immunity to India and we are interested in engaging with India. And the more important piece of information is that the question was asked that what is Taliban's position on Kashmir? The spokesperson for Taliban, I mean Afghanistan Ministry of External Affairs said that this is an internal issue. So the question asked, internal issue of India, the answer was that it is an internal issue of Kashmir and all other stakeholders involved. So you see, this is a very KG situation, this is a very, what should I say, an indirect answer. But the good thing is that the statement was not explicitly in Pakistan favor something that is a sigh of relief for us and then Afghanistan they have reiterated that their land will not be used for terrorism or any other activities against targeting any third nation so that is also good news however there are some issues and that we will be looking at it so what was our previous instance Previously, we didn't recognize Taliban and we also we always supported the Northern Alliance about it. We have already discussed in the last lecture. What was India's position? That peace process should be Afghan-led, Afghan-owned and Afghan-controlled. You see, that was a situation time when Taliban was one of the negotiating parties and Taliban had its headquarters in Quetta in Pakistan. So, it was Pakistan which was influencing the negotiations a lot. And we knew that if Pakistan continues to influence the negotiations naturally, that will be detrimental to India's interests. So, this position that it should be Afghan led, Afghan owned and Afghan controlled. It simply meant that there should not be any stake for any third nation. So that is detrimental to our interest. Moreover, 
we have enough soft power there is enough willingness within afghanistan to remain engaged with india so naturally any peace process any outcome that involves only afghan population that will be more beneficial to india so this was our stated position for all these times but now we have there is no clear cut change but now we have started saying that there should be protection to minorities there should be protection for women rights focus on women education and tackling terrorism terrorism and all because now we have accepted that taliban is a reality and we need to recognize that okay so that is what in recent times there is pragmatism this was to a greater extent idealism just like in myanmar here in afghanistan also we said that we are not going to engage so imagine a situation when ic814 was hijacked and had we been engaged with taliban without recognizing it there was a chance that we could have negotiated a better deal but when you do not remain engaged generally you pay a greater price so that is why what is important is to remain engaged okay so in qatar also we engaged with them and apart from qatar there was a dialogue in moscow and some of the retired diplomats they attended that dialogue and that was informal cooperation or informal association with the afghan peace process involving the taliban post us withdrawal what did we do we evacuated our embassies so that was a very tough situation and this evacuation of embassies has impacted india us relations and trust on the us because on the one hand us says that india is a partner most india is an indis indispensable partner and most india us relationship is the most defining partnership of 21st century but on the other hand you take an unilateral decision in our neighborhood to evacuate that area without consulting with us so how can india trust usa so in case of india us relations you can give this as an example of distrust sudden evacuation of afghanistan without consultation okay so now what is our strategy we have engaged with Af taliban but without any recognition we do not recognize them as the rulers or as the administration but we have remained engaged and now embassies have also been opened okay we have differentiated between afghanistan administration and afghan people and we have provided them with food and medical aid engaged with other nations through dsrd so whenever a question is about afghanistan or afghanistan and india one institutional cooperation that can be sco and some new initiative of india is delhi regional security dialogue a meeting of nsas of all these regional nations where they tried they discussed about stabilizing afghanistan and after this discussion iran explicitly said that india has stakes in stabilizing afghanistan and two nations china and pakistan they were conspicuous by their absence so this can be used as a negative that china and pakistan do not agree with india's greater involvement involvement in stabilizing afghanistan which was reflected in their absence from delhi regional security dialogue okay so now what we have done initially a technical team was sent to afghanistan and when that team went there they saw that all their equipments like metal detectors all those detector doors their uh, armors their guns their bulletproof vests 
all of them they were just as they supposed to be so this was again an indication from taliban because suppose had they been of hostile attitude perhaps they would have gone for destroying all the all those equipments and armaments of india but it was not destroyed but it was they it was, though the campus was searched but all the equipments they were just left as they were so now it has been upgraded i think it is to a some deputy director or director level person and a contingent of itbp is there we will be looking at the challenges because of this deployment because there has been criticism and that criticism is from the idealists they say that you are making your presence in afghanistan so that is some sort of giving legitimacy to the taliban rule which has not given women their rights to education and there are continuous attack on minorities be it hindus or sikhs yes that is a challenge no doubt but at the same time for the safety of indian population something like ic814 does not happen again india needs to remain engaged with the taliban in afghanistan and moreover after we have seen that pressure hardly works be it on north korea it did not work on iran it did not work and it does not also seem to be working for taliban and if we pressurize more or if we do not go for engaging taliban we will be creating opportunity to throw taliban into chinese lap so that will be another challenge for us just like in case of myanmar initially we were not engaged during 1980s why because we are in favor of democracy as a result what happened myanmar's engagement with china increased we reduced our engagement with sri lanka because of this ltt crisis as a result what happened china became the key arms exporter to sri lanka so it is not about idealism it is not about values but it is about the interests how we can secure india's interests so that is why we have gone for this engagement taliban has provided security assurance diplomatic immunity and it has asked india to complete connectivity projects and move from humanitarian assistance to developmental aspects and on kashmir they have said that it is an internal issue of kashmir and all other relevant sides that is the bit of information okay so if any of you has got any questions and i am repeating this again and again please ask questions do not hesitate you are hesitating online so imagine how much hesitation would be when you attend some offline class and at the end of the day it is you who is at loss you you have got doubts you are not asking so as a result what will happen your doubt will simply not be cleared and suppose the same question comes in the examination then what will happen there is a greater chance that you will be writing some either you will be not you will not be writing or you will be writing something wrong so it is in your interest i have said this in the last class as well and repeating this had it been for a simple one way lecture i would have recorded it at my own comfort there was no need for me to wake up at 7 in the morning so it is a request please make use of this all these topics i know there must be some sort of doubts please ask that it is for your benefit otherwise just say me that no sir no need for going for youtube live just upload the lectures no issues with me i'll be comfortable i'll be recording at 2 or 4 in the noon or afternoon at least i'll have a good morning sleep so please think about this okay so now let us go to the next slide yes in the question number 2 of previous week questions the topic was related to challenges so naturally 
all those challenges that will be here but as i said positives there are positives also because of taliban and those positives are discussed over here and you see that positives what are they if we remain engaged first of all china pakistan's design of gaining strategic depth we can deny that taliban's over dependence on china that can be denied if we remain engaged there are a greater chances that terror attacks on india that can be denied because then we can give them a clear cut information that if you give shelter to any terrorist or any terrorism is perpetrated from your grounds simply humanitarian assistance will not be coming and now they are in ruling position so naturally these threats will mean a lot to them moreover and even prior to us withdrawal there were questions because even within taliban there are multiple fact factions and at that time also prior to 2021 15th august 2021 they were begrudgingly accepting that yes india's involvement in afghanistan is for good and india had immensely helped afghanistan people so that soft power they all they are also accepting and some of the factions within taliban they were in favor of going for deeper engagement with india another we are seeing that emergence of isisk khorasan province and that isis creates challenge not only for taliban but for india also moreover even within afghanistan they have the isis k khorasan they have criticized taliban and they have said issued threats against the minorities like hindus and sikhs the attack at gurudwara karte parwan it was done by isis so this presents opportunity for cooperation with taliban then protection of our investment and going for further investing because Afghanistan's overall resources are perhaps around one trillion dollar. There is Haji Gak, and there is Mes Ayank or Ayank, something like that. These are some of the largest copper and iron ores in Afghanistan. so we can go for investment then for connectivity projects all this project presents then yes taliban have also said that they are interested in tapi you must be remembering tapi the pipeline turkmenistan afghanistan pakistan india from turkmenistan to india a energy pipeline so that pipeline afghanistan also knows that they'll be benefiting and through this tapi from turkmenistan to india if this is successful though there will be we will have dependence on pakistan because it will be crossing pakistan territory but at the same time this will also deepen our engagement with central asia and provide energy security to us moreover this pipeline trade gas pipe through gas pipelines they are comparatively cheaper so due to all these benefits so these are mutual complementarities and they have said that they are interested in trilateral cooperation between afghanistan iran and india related to connectivity projects and also regarding tapi so all these are positives okay so what will be the benefit i have already explained prevent pakistan from gaining strategic depth stabilizing afghanistan preventing terror attacks in india that will be emanating from afghanistan tackling narcotics trade because afghanistan is part of golden crescent so these are some of the key words please do write them golden crescent narcotics trade in the east side among us yan there is go, golden triangle and golden crescent golden triangle 
this is related to narcotics then opportunity for investment connectivity assert india's regional leadership if we engage in taliban and if we are in a position to bring in some significant changes within them that will prove india's leadership in the region okay and soft power among afghan population naturally this will get boosted this will get emboldened okay so these are some of the positives if you can suggest any more positive you can write down in the comment and now let us look at the what are the challenges or what are the negatives the first is there is trust deficit with taliban why this trust deficit because in the past we have seen that there were some terror attacks then there were terror attacks on indian embassies by taliban hijack ic814 and moreover within taliban it is the haqqanis that are at the helm and haqqanis they have got very close links with isi of pakistan so the purpose of pakistan and isi was that by bringing haqqanis in the leadership role through haqqanis they will be able to gain that strategic depth and indirectly govern afghanistan and we have seen what had happened with kulbhushan jadhav and the news report was about some other incidents of similar manner that what they would be doing is that some of the indians working on the development tal projects in the region they will be abducted by pakistan and later on framed as terrorists or intelligence agents trying to destabilize the pakistan so such threats are always there till haqqani is are at helm and four to five brothers they are all in key position and even mulla umar's son though he is the defense minister but he is not that much strong and this has related resulted in another factionalism mulla umar's son mulla yaqub he his stronghold is in kandhar and haqqani they have a hold over kabul so all these challenges that are there next animosities of the past you are understanding it haqqani is at the helm and we have not recognized taliban yet so naturally this will be a bummer and even within taliban there is factionalism so initially we saw that this was a pause we are we were looking at this as a positive but now suppose if we have to negotiate or deal with taliban the question that arises is is, is which faction should we engage with so it can be a situation that you have engaged or you have brought in agreement with one of the factions and some other faction is not in agreement and you might face some threat from those factions we are seeing that in punjabshir and other regions along the north and the west of afghanistan all these groups they are strengthening themselves and there have been attack on taliban groups some uzbek groups then some shia groups so then hajra groups they are strengthening themselves and slowly there are information about weakening of taliban hold from some of the region so this does create a challenge for us next is increasing footprints of isis so even if you engage with taliban emergence of isis will be a threat because then it is isis who would be at who can launch terror attacks unwillingness of pakistan and china we know that pakistan is the immediate neighbor of afghanistan and quickest route from india to afghanistan crosses through pakistan and pakistan has been supported by the chinese so if they have got an unwilling willingness the scope for cooperation can be reduced because these nations they can create challenges for india taliban cooperation 
China's plan of expanding CPC to Afghanistan. We have already seen that. And Taliban, they have initially, when they came to power, they said China as their gateway to the whole world. Because they also know that China has got deeper pockets. But I think there is a realization within Taliban, looking at the situation of Sri Lanka, then it is Pakistan, Myanmar, other nations, that Chinese debt diplomacy is very, very threatening. So perhaps there can be a realization within Taliban because till now they have not agreed to expanding CPEC up to China, sorry, up to Afghanistan. Okay. So these are some of the challenges. Wow. Now, next topic. China's demand for military outpost in Pakistan. Quite an uh, interesting development, I would say. Because what had happened was that after CPEC started facing threats from all these Baloch groups, then there, then there were Uyghurs who were part of ISIS Khorasan. So, Pakistan military requisitioned almost half a division of army for safety of CPEC China Pakistan Economic Corridor. But still, there were attacks on Chinese nationals, Chinese workers within uh, Pakistan. So, as a result, China has asked for, a mili for military out outposts in Pakistan and also in Afghanistan. But this should not be seen simply as expand, I mean security of CPEC, but it has got all those geopolitical military goals. You see, what were the reasons? The first, as I said, recent spat of attacks and killing on Chinese workers and there was threat to Chinese projects from Baloch and Uyghurs militants. Why Uyghur militants? Because of the repression of China to the Muslims in Xinjiang. Okay. And why? Baloch, just look at this map. When you look at it, just you see this blue dot, this was the initial supposed route that it would simply cross like this and it will be reaching at this point. And it was crossing through all these underdeveloped regions of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and all. But then what happened? The plan was changed or redesigned. Now you can see that it, it is almost going hugging all this coastline of Balochistan. So when you go across the coastline of Balochistan, the fishermen, the Baloch fishermen, they will face trouble. And there are news that China is fishing in all these areas and Baloch fishermen, they are being denied their fishing rights. So, rather than simply crossing Balochistan, you changed your path like this. So, it's but natural that when you occupy more and more Baloch lands without giving any benefit to Baloch people, and rather than giving benefit, curbing their rights to fish, they have been perennially fishing because they are fishing folk living nearby to the ocean. So naturally you will face threat. And moreover, when you look at this, it is going across whole of this Punjab and going across whole of this Punjab means most of the Pakistan army, they are Punjabis. So rather than De going through underdeveloped regions of Pakistan so that all these regions they get developed. The focus was to address the interests of Ch Pakistan military. So as a result, 
अपार्ट फ्रॉम पंजाब ऑल दीज रीजन दे आर डिसकंटेंटेड एंड अनदर पर्पज बिहाइंड दिस चेंज ऑफ रूट वॉज बिकॉज दिस रीजन ऑफ के पी के वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट के पी के इट मीन्स यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट टी टी पी तहरीक तालिबान पाकिस्तान सो दैट प्रोजेक्ट डेफिनेटली वुड हैव फेस्ड थ्रेड फ्रॉम टी टी पी सो चाइना ऑल्सो थॉट दैट राधर देन गोइंग थ्रू ऑल दिस दिस एरिया एंड डेवलपिंग पाकिस्तान वाई डोंट आई गेट फॉर गो फॉर सिक्योरिटी ऑफ माई प्रोजेक्ट and now it is touching all these areas there is lahore then there is islamabad so that is why even baloch and because of shinkyang it is the uyghurs they are all against this project that is one aspect another because pakistan failed to provide security and greater to have greater control over pakistan affairs it is something like a subsidiary alliance and a resident living during the british era the resident that was living in a nations that has gone for subsidiary alliance with the british so if chinese military is living in pakistan it's but natural that they would first focus on their own interests rather than interests of pakistan so whatever policy comes they would always try to tweak it in a way that it goes in china's favor something like subsidiary alliance then you see now china has an aim of becoming a global power rather than a regional power and cpec is being seen as a vehicle and one of the important requirements of a re global power is not just about economic investment but also military investment military presence so china has got a base nearby in zibuti another base in gwadar so if chinese military is present in the vicinity in pakistan if there is some sort of disturbance they can be quickly deployed around zibuti in gulf region so gulf nations who are looking for security cooperation after us drawdown from the region china can provide that alternative china has also gone for military engagements with african nations so after economy and gaining all those strategic areas through bri this is another step for china to expand its military footprint and make is itself a global power so and since afghanistan will be a part of central asia so naturally that would lead to chinese presence in the central asia the point here is that presently in central asia there is a duopoly military security or security aspect will be looked after by russia and economic domain that will be looked after by china but it's but natural that china will be not be very much comfortable because it's but natural that chinese influence in central asia would be very limited so by ensuring its military presence in pakistan then in afghanistan slowly it can expand even to the central asia and since presently russia is in such a position that it will be go it will go for towing the chinese line in present circumstances naturally russia will not oppose to any such initiative so this is another timely move from china in central asia security partner of gulf states already discussed and this will lead to a two front threat for india this point you can bring in upar mein kahin bhi because presently along the borders there is a threat accepted but yet the point is that it is tibet tibet is at very 
high altitude military deployment there is not that much easy and even if you have got some aircrafts because of height the air is rarefied the aircraft cannot run with that much load so that is among the key challenges to china along its along the northern border of india so if there is a military presence in pakistan naturally north and west china will have a military presence across both these fronts so an attempt to encircle or contain india through military deployment you have got all these ports now you are going for military deployment so purpose is so that india remains engaged in the south asian geography and it does not challenge uh, china across asia and then across the globe okay now concerns for india concerns will be very simple a two front chinese threat and this will be a first case of chinese military presence in south asia in case of solomon islands also we saw that china has an attempt to uh, have a military presence in south pacific now in south asia so just look at this from the geo strategic perspective that china is trying to have its military footprints across the region so as to assert itself as a global power at a time when usa is reducing its military footprint and third would be this would challenge india's vision of net security provider in the region because if china has got a military presence in usa sorry in pakistan naturally there will be military presence in the indian ocean region and if china has got an indian military presence in the indian ocean region the threat to india's idea of an being a net security provider in the indian ocean region that would be very much potent i think i have got a map regarding cpcs yes. so now having discussed that military deployment let us look at china pakistan economic corridor i think i should go into detail of the cpc because i want you to understand even though it takes some more time i think i should go into uh, any one of it do, should i discuss cpc in detail or should i just briefly brush it please online students please suggest it so regarding cpc the aim is to link kasgar with gwadar initially 46 billion today its budget is over 65 billion dollars and its aim as i discussed is to transform china from a regional power to a global power and get rid of its malacca dilemma now let me explain what is this malacca dilemma because in case of cpc you will keep listening about it you see this is malacca strait right so initially so when chinese trade just look at it when chinese trade comes across this region and this is the key energy source for china so naturally it will cross from here and it will have to cross here and then only it can go to china or any product from china to south asia or even to the what should i say yes to africa or to west asia will have to cross this region and this is malacca strait this is a choke point and if this is blocked to a greater extent naturally the trade will be blocked and that will be detrimental to chinese economy so for avoiding this dilemma what china did it tried to create a 
isthmus across thailand but it did not materialize and thailand denied it so after that when china saw that i am unable to do this it tried to think of a road link road link from here up to this kasgar to pakistan this is cpec so suppose even if and yes regarding malacca we must not forget that it is here that india has got andaman and nicobar islands and that has got a tri services command for in india so india will always be in a position to very simply block this and that will be threat to china so in order to avoid all these threats this route so that whatever energy it has got that will come here and from here that will simply reach up to china and you do not need to cross this region moreover regarding trade through belt and road initiatives it has created some road links that would reach up to europe and if it is re reaching up to europe taking it up to west asia won't be a bigger challenge however present scenario is that cpec has been no uh, not much movement on the cpc for last four years and cpc authority that has also been abolished by pakistan government okay and uh, another issue with uh, this is that uh, some of the projects like energy projects that have been started by china unfortunately pakistan could not pay back the bills and all for the energy consumption so as a result all the uh, power plants they stopped paying uh, stop supplying electricity and they are shut down what happened in the meantime at a time when cpec was China was trying to operate CPEC. This sanction on Russia came place, and as a result, power of Siberia. This is the pipeline that connects Russia with China. So when you are getting energy supplies from your neighbors through pipelines naturally everything else would be very much costly so that is another factor why chinese focus on cpec got reduced because here it only remained i mean its value as an economic project naturally that got reduced and it became just a strategic project moreover with economic situation of pakistan even china thinks that would it be prudent to continue investing in pakistan when uh, uh, chances of getting a return of on investment is very low and even within china we know that there are there is economic crisis there are huge debt burden on uh, all these banks and chinese provinces and real estate sector we have seen how it has gone down even in tech sector the state has been very harsh there have been investigation against some of the important it giants so as a result and moreover this zero covid policy there has been lockdown even within china so because of all these factors chinese investment appetite has also gone down so these are some of the threats to cpec okay i think that should be sufficient transform to get rid of malacca dilemma and pakistan had expected that this would be path to prosperity why because all these chinese trade that would be coming through cpec so naturally pakistan will be benefited and moreover cpec is not just about roads there are multiple projects 
in this area there are, oh, sorry in this in this area there are some dams that are to be built some coal power plants that are to be built so through all these investment pakistan expected that there will be revenue generation employment generation and its export potential would increase but unfortunately pakistan in, is in such a mess that rather than becoming a path for prosperity it has become a debt trap and one of the i think he was us us or british statesman his name is john adams john adams has said that there are two ways of conquering a nation one is through sword and another is through debt and it seems that in case of pakistan and china it is the second one almost stagnant for last four years the pc authority has been scrapped power plant shut down already i have discussed and this 9.5 percent that is government debt apart from government debt the loans from chinese banks some of other chinese institutions some of the companies estimation is that overall debt to pakistan from china in one form or the other direct or indirect is over 80 billion dollars and 80 billion dollars is a huge amount and at us at us i mean uh, at a time when your currency is in a free fall and every day you are going to the imf for gaining some sort of concessions and there are security threats to the project that we have already discussed under the case of deployments i hope this uh, should be sufficient regarding cpec if you want cpec to be detail, discussed in greater detail or some other questions related to cpec or china pakistan you can ask those questions either on telegram group or under the comments i would be taking them up because this access this access is very important and you need to understand that not only as an upsc aspirant but also as a common citizen okay so now let us look at the next topic next topic is importance of seo for india defense minister he had visited seo at Tashkent, and there was a meet and uh, some of the factual information regarding seo let me make this very clear Iran is not yet a part of SCO. Okay. It is, and there is a lack of clarity. Some say that by end of 2022 it will become a member, or by end of 20, 2023 it will become a member. But Iran will become a member. And apart from Iran, it is Belarus that has also applied for SCO membership, and that we will be looking. So what is SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization? I am not getting into detail of SCO. Just about India SCO relations. Okay, some factual information. Eurasian Political Economy and Security Organization. Its members are apart from Turkmenistan, all four Central Asian nations. Then it is China, Russia, India, Pakistan. Russia wanted India to be there, so to balance out India, China wanted Pakistan to be there. And RATS, I have already said, Regional Anti-Terrorism Structure, it is one of the two organizations and tackling secessionism, extremism and, and terrorism, these are the clear-cut mandate of SCO. Okay. And this is the significance, 60% of area of Eurasia. 30% uh, of global GDP and I think it was 40% of global population. I, are, I am unable to recall, I will write it down. Or on the telegram group, I will write it down some sort of, what was this, I am unable to recall the exact number. 
okay on telegram group i'll write it down then defense minister statement three statements so in case of sco you can remember all these three that this was the statement given by the defense minister three one was related to afghanistan so while discussing india and afghanistan you can bring in this point that the defense minister at sco meet also reiterated india's position that afghan territory must not be used for attacking others and should not be used for providing safe safe haven to the terrorists and he urged members to jointly fight and eliminating terrorism including cross border terrorism so this was indicated towards pakistan and third was with respect to russia that this crisis should be handled through dialogue so again it is not a conflict for india for india this is a crisis okay so now let us look at the membership these are the members these are the observers and these two belarus and iran iran has already applied and it is almost certain to be member and then it is belarus and this creates a huge challenge for us because there is usa sorry there is russia there is china now there will be iran and after iran there will be belarus so all these four nations they are anti west so sco is also termed by many as asian nato so we are now member of a group where except for india democratic credentials of all these groups are questioned but at the same time this also underscores india's strategic autonomy that at a time when we are member of sco we are also member of quad or i to you to so this shows that india is not a camp follower but india acts as per its own interests okay so this is just to show you okay so that through this diagram you do remember because there can always be a question in in the prelims regarding membership who is a member who is not a member so you can remember this next importance and challenges one is makes india makes india part of eurasian security architecture you see mandate of sco is not limited to asia but eurasia because of russia is there okay and central asian nations they are also part of asia but overall that becomes eurasia because russia is also there prior to sco's membership india was not a member of any such regional organization in the region related to security yes in south asia we have got a distinct profile but not in the broader eurasian region but now we are a member of sco which has go whose mandate is also related to security so india's membership that underscores that india has got its stakes in the eurasian region eurasian security and this was the attempt of china and even now we see that through all these ports and then military deployments and all to box india into the south asian geography but when india becomes a member of sco where there are central asian nations now iran will be there russia is there as a result it's but natural that india has broken out of that south asian geography india has its stakes india has it claims india has its saying in broader eurasian region third ensuring strategic autonomy as i already explained member of quad 
I2U2, SCO, BRICS. This shows that India is not associated with just any specific groupings, but India engages with all these groups as per its own interests. So this underscores India's strategic autonomy. Then we cannot go for Pakistan centric, but yes, regarding non-Pakistan centric security threats, SCO will be beneficial. And moreover, even with regards to connectivity initiatives, because connectivity is also one of the key mandates of SCO. Okay. Platform for engaging with Central Asia. Though in recent times we have uh, this uh, dedicated platform for engaging with Central Asia, but apart from that, this can be another platform for engaging with Central Asia and moreover, Central Asia is there and Russia is also there. And Russia has got its, got its security interests in the region. And Russia has objections to Chinese security engagements in Central Asia, but Russia does not have objections with India's security engagements in Central Asia. So this creates opportunity for us to go for deeper engagements with Central Asia because with Central Asia, our engagements are very limited. Our overall trade relation is just $1.5 billion and out of this $1 billion is to with Kazakhstan. And yes, the policy related to Central Asia is Connect Central Asia policy. So, apart from this, you can mention that this will help in expanding strengthening connect central asia policy or implementation of connect central asia policy strengthening cooperation with russia at a time when india is being seen as going getting closer to the west seo provides opportunity for strengthening india russia engagements and moreover we can engage with china and we can engage with pakistan because presently Sark is in limbo, so SEO provides a platform for engaging with Pakistan. What are the challenges? Challenges are the first is balancing its partnership with the West because now Iran will be there and it will be seen as anti West bloc. But India has got its very much significant stakes with the West, so challenge will be in balancing this. Another Membership of Iran makes it a more discernible anti-West platform. So naturally these two points, they are very much similar. So it depends if it is a 10 marker, write one point. If it is a 15 marker, you can write both points. And with regards to terrorism, since Pakistan is there, tackling terrorism, India-centric terrorism becomes difficult. Why? Because the epicenter of India specific terrorism is always Pakistan. And all other nations with regards to connectivity projects, all other nations, they have ratified BRI. India is the only nation that has not. And many a times in our agreements, other nations, they agree to BRI and India simply abstains. So that makes India an outlier in that group. Another point, ongoing border tensions with China. And next is engaging with China in the face of no limits India-Russia partnership. We saw that prior to the Winter Olympics, they went for no limits partnership between China and Russia. So at a time engaging with Central Asia or even engaging with Russia can become more challenging because now they have a no limits partnership. So at a time it may, at in such situations it may so happen that India's interests might become secondary to the Chinese interests for Russia. And very recently we saw one of the senior members of Russian government 
criticizing about quad and other initiatives and indo pacific and specifically india was also named so such cases they do create challenges for sc okay if you have got any questions unfortunately the tab is off but yes i will look at those questions if there are any i will answer them on the telegram or under the comments if you have got any question please write it under the comments or on telegram group ir this week is the name of the telegram group all small no gaps i mean no spaces and your questions will get answered or either now or in the next class okay so now let us come to the last topic and i think today we'll be completing all the topics unfortunately last week we could not india latin america relations we know that the external affairs minister he is on visit to latin america so latin america is very much important for india to geographically this is very distant why because one is related to energy security and roughly 15 to 20 percent of our energy comes from that region so what we need is to now there can be a question you can ask that sir africa is so close then uh, gulf is just our extended neighborhood why do we need to go that far because the transport cost that will also increase and that is a valid question the point is that we need diversification you saw what happened in europe because they were very much dependent on russia when russia stopped the supply of gas through nord stream all these uh, european nations they were in a very precarious situation so just to avoid any sort of blackmail we have diversified our energy resources roughly 15 to 20 percentage from africa 15 to 20 percentage from latin america around 60 percent 50 to 60 percent i think that is from gulf region even we are getting some energy from usa so we have got for and next is with regards to food security a significant chunk of our edible oils they come from latin america the population here is less i think roughly 650 million or so that is the population but it has got vast arable lands and indian companies they have gone for investment and they are doing farming apart from food security opportunity for india's investment and there are specific numbers also given of total india's car exports 28% is to latin america of total motorcycles 22% even for indian it companies indian pharmaceutical companies because they are also developing nations they are not very developed and india provides affordable but quality product moreover three of the nations they are mexico brazil and argentina they are part of g20 their membership is also important for any global negotiations because in latin america there are total 33 nations for india's membership of unsc any global engagement be it related to climate change be it related to food security so because of all this latin america becomes very much important for us okay and regarding renewable energy i hope you people must be aware about this a b c that is lithium triangle and what is this lithium triangle argentina bolivia and chile we are trying to get some of the mines through an organization that we have created kabil 
दिस इज नॉट दैट मूवी इट इज खनिज विदेश इंडिया लिमिटेड ए कॉन्सोर्शियम ऑफ वेरियस ऑफ द इंडियन पी एस यूज द पर्पज इज टू गेट सम ऑफ द माइंड सो दैट वी कैन हैव सम सॉर्ट ऑफ एनर्जी सिक्योरिटी और इकोनॉमिक सिक्योरिटी बिकॉज वी नो दैट फ्यूचर इज गोइंग टू बी फॉर रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी बैटरी टेक्नोलॉजी सो लिथियम जिरकोनियम कोबाल्ट एक्सेट्रा दैट इज this region is very much rich in that so even from that perspective it becomes very much important and that is these are some of the facts that is written over here unsc voting negotiation on global issues energy food security minerals all these i have discussed bilateral trade it is roughly around 33 billion dollars way below its potential key market for it services pharmaceutical energy yes it services and also pharma okay and indian investments they are in hydrocarbon pharma sector and all and overall investment is more than 20 billion dollar the problem here is that it is the private sector that first went for engagement rather than first the government going and then private sector it was the private sector and moreover the government has not been able to supplement the effort of private sector out of 33 nations presently only in 14 nations india has got its engagement india's engagement is a to a greater extent limited to these three nations mexico brazil and argentina this embassy in peruguay that was opened so now this 14 has become 15 So out of thirty-three, you have embassy in just fifteen nations. So naturally, your your footprints that will get limited. So next is first of all, Latin America, Mexico is included. Latin America, those nations where the romantic languages that have got their origin in Latin languages like French, Portuguese, Spanish. etcetera are uh spoken okay so these are so this is bolivia this is chile chile and argentina this is that lithium triangle okay what are the challenges challenges are is geographical distance second is language barrier why because english is not spoken in all these areas we have been very much effective and efficient in nations where that speak english another is lack of government in initiative to supplement efforts of private sector already discussed and india lacks membership of key organizations like inter america development bank this is latin america plus caribbean inter america development bank so this bank is related to these nations and however india has got a pta preferential trade agreement with mercosur this is another regional trade organization mercu sur mercosur and there is lack of diplomatic presence i i have already said that out of 33 only in 15 nations we have got a diplomatic presence and its engagement is limited to key nations like mexico brazil and argentina i think i have got some time so briefly falkland islands because presently it is in discussion and that is what the external affairs minister he has said and moreover what has happened that peruguay embassy has been opened in brazil there was not much engagement because in brazil elections are due and we are not clear who is going to be in power so at such a time going for any significant engagement and all can be risky but yes this is falkland islands and with argentina the engagements were there were something you can write it down 
the external affairs minister he first let us talk about falkland islands in 1833 it was prior to 1833 falkland islands was with argentina and in 1833 you britain went and they had presence over there okay and it was a continuous presence of britain over falkland islands which argentina claims that it belongs to its territory later on what happened unfortunately there was no solution to, to this issue in 1982 there was falkland wars it was argentina that sent its navy because at that time there was some sort of internal crisis within argentina and it was being ruled by the military so naturally just like any nation to divert focus from the internal issues internal unrest civil wars you go for a war so it was argentina navy that went for occupying some of the islands matter went to the unsc then matter and as a result what happened then britain sent its navy and the argentine navy that was driven out however all these nations latin america and all these nations they denied that any falkland ship with british flag or any uh, uh, with british british flag or falkland flag they are not going to let them enter and all those were some uh, disputes not much important then what happened that in 2013 there was a referendum and that referendum in that referendum overwhelmingly those people from falkland islands they said that we want to remain with uk so naturally uk says that this goes to the right of people of self determination they want to be with usa so sorry uk so they must remain with the uk but argentina says that those people living in falkland islands they are not the aboriginals but they are the imported population so they cannot claim that yes we have that traditional right and moreover prior to 1833 it was part of argentina and this falkland islands lie along the continental shelf of Falk, of argentina so since they are in our continental self that island belongs to us so this is the dispute india's position is that as usual the solution should be with negotiations and moreover since we have had a strong position against colonialism this is a vestige of colonialism so colonialism or right to self determination these are the two issues that are in contention with respect to this dispute then uh, it was in april argentina foreign minister he had come to india and he had launched commission for dialogue on question of falkland islands in india and falkland is also called as malvinas or just to say ha huh. Malvinas Islands, Falkland generally it is called as Falkland, but by Argentina it is called as Malvinas Islands. And then with Argentina, there were talks about possibility for development of payment mechanism in local currencies, so that will reduce our dependence on dollars and will lead to internationalization of rupee. With Russia also, the talk was about using. indian payment system rupee and russian payment system mir because all these visa and master cards they have blocked russia and then argentina they are also interested in tejas aircraft and they have also supported our nsg membership and india has supported argentina's membership for a brics okay so that was all for today's class and uh,
let me just take you to the question for that will be that you have to answer india afghanistan policy has seen a shift from idealism to pragmatism i think that has been discussed in greater detail so you should be very much comfortable in answering that and this is related to china's demand for military outposts in pakistan indicates its expanding profile and geopolitical ambitions this has also been discussed sufficiently so i think you should be able to answer this very much comfortably okay so that's all for today's class thank you very much and yes please do give your suggestions regarding topics for the next week on our telegram group that is ir this week no space okay do give your suggestions or any questions and you can also write it down below in the comments okay thank you very much have a great week ahead